our sales formula is retail price times 1 minus the revenue discount times the quantity. That's no problem if we can add a column and build a formula like this. We're going to round everything, but we're going to look up the price, multiply by 1 minus the revenue discount times the quantity. We copy that down, and then we make a pivot table. But what if we could simulate the relationship between these two tables in a single cell array formula? Now, we'll see how to do it with the old school sum product and the new school filter. All right, we're going to start our old school formula out with the old school lookup function. VLOOKUP. I need to look up Alpine, comma, within that full table right there. And this is an Excel table, so I use my diagonal black arrow to put in D product, the table name, comma. The item I'm trying to retrieve is in the second column, so I put a 2. And we're doing exact match, so you can put false or a 0. Now, if I hit the F9 key, that delivers a single value, the single price. This is not an array formula yet. Control Z. But what I really want for every row in this table is the net price given the discount for each row. So now we multiply, not times the column of discounts, but in parentheses, $1 minus the column of discounts. Now as soon as I put a column of values into this formula, and the array of items is going to be operated on by a math operator, that's when we jump into the realm of array formulas. So close parentheses. If I highlight just this part in F9, you see it's delivering an array of items. So you know that was an array operation. Each one of those items is the net price equivalent. So that means for the first record, two pennies of discount. But we pay for every $1 of price, 98 pennies. Control Z. Now if I hit F9, I get the discounted price for every row in the table. Control Z. Now I multiply times quantity. And when I hit F9, those are the row by row line sales values. Now we only want to pick out some of them. We only want the ones for Alpine. So Control Z. At the end, we'll multiply in parentheses how many of the items in the product column are equal to Alpine. Close parentheses. If I highlight this and hit F9, I get trues and falses. Only the rows where there's a true will we get the line item sales for Aspen. Control Z. If I hit F9, I get numbers for Aspen and zeros. Now I need to round. Control Z. So after the equal sign, round. And at the very end, comma, we're rounding to the penny, so we put a 2. Close parentheses. F9, there's the rounded amounts. Now we need to add Control Z. Since we're doing old school, if we use the sum function, we have to use that special keystroke, Control Shift Enter. And I don't want to do that. I want to use one of the cool functions in old school sum product that understands array calculations. So anytime you're adding the result from an array calculation, put it inside of some product. Then you don't have to use that keystroke. Just Enter or Control Enter, because I want to put the formula in the cell and copy it down. I go to the last cell and hit F2. That old school is looking good. Now if we're going to do new school, well, first off, we get to use XLOOKUP to look up the product, comma, and we give it in lookup array the column with the match items or the product names, comma, and the return array. Those are the items we're trying to go and get. Close parentheses. That's delivering a single value times, in parentheses, 1 minus the whole column. But wait a second. That's the old school. Right where we have that column, now we're going to filter it to get a smaller list of numbers. So I'm going to say, hey, filter, take that array, comma, and in include, we have to look at product and ask the question, are you equal to Aspen? 
Now here's the interesting thing right here. That include, that has to work over the whole column, just like the sum product formula. But that one operation there will deliver a smaller list, and then both the subtraction and the multiplication will work across fewer values. Now we close off that times the filtered quantity, comma, and we have to do another full column, checking against the product, are you equal to Aspen? Close parentheses. If I hit the F9 key, well, there's the unrounded values without all the zeros, a much shorter list. Control Z, we'll have to round it fewer values we're rounding. That's an array calculation, too, where the array calculation is a function argument array operation, comma 2, close parentheses, F9. There's our rounded amounts. Now, because we're in Microsoft 365, it understands array formulas, so we can just put it in sum and Enter, or Control-Enter, and copy it down. So there's the new school. There's the old school. Now, this is a small data set. I went ahead and tested these formulas on 200,000 rows of data. And guess what? There wasn't much of a difference. I was surprised. I thought some product would take longer. But filter and sum did 316 milliseconds, which is not very much time. Didn't take very long to calculate. Some product took 345, only a 9% increase. So that one took less time to type out. This one took more time to type out, and it's a longer formula. But it looks like it calculated a little bit faster. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. All right, we'll see you next video.